If you're a student or a data professional and want to get hands-on with Databricks but are concerned about the cost, then you're not alone, because this is a question that I get asked by many of my students. The perception that Databricks requires a big spending budget comes from its usage-based pricing model, which can deter a lot of people. However, there are ways of accessing Databricks without incurring significant costs. We'll look at three different approaches. Number one, the Databricks Community Edition, which is free and great for learning. The second approach is by leveraging free cloud credits that you can get from providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And finally, using the Databricks 14-day free trial, which gives you access to all of Databricks's premium features. Any of these approaches are suitable for students who want to start learning Databricks, try out PySpark, or work on small projects without the worry of costs. So let's get into the details where I can show you how to make the most of these options. The first option that I want to highlight is the Databricks Community Edition. This is a free version of Databricks with limited features. To get started, simply visit the Community Edition sign-up page. Once you do that, you'll be prompted for your email. Once you enter your email, you'll be sent a code to access the workspace. Simply input the code, and then you'll be taken to the Databricks Community Edition workspace. I'll leave a link to the sign-up page in the description of this video. So once you're signed in, you can spin up your first cluster and start experimenting with notebooks right away. With the Community Edition, you get access to a single node cluster and the ability to write and run code in notebooks. So if we head over to Compute, you can see we can create an all-purpose compute. However, once we create the all-purpose compute, we're limited in the size of this compute. As you can see, we only have 15 GB memory. So this is fairly lightweight. Now, while the cluster is great for small-scale projects and building your foundational skills in data engineering and PySpark, you're still working with minimal resources. So it's not suitable for large data sets or performance heavy tasks. Features like Unity Catalog, Databricks SQL, job scheduling, collaboration tools, and advanced configurations are also not included. But for someone learning the ropes, this is still a valuable resource. It allows you to focus on the essentials, like writing code, understanding Spark transformations, and exploring data without being overwhelmed. So this is a simple and hassle-free way to get familiar with Databricks. And because it's free, you can keep coming back to it as you learn and grow. So this is highly recommended for absolute beginners to Databricks. While the Databricks Community Edition is a fantastic starting point for beginners, it still has its limitations, as I've already mentioned. It doesn't include the full set of features available with enterprise-grade Databricks, which might restrict your ability to work with larger datasets or advanced configurations. Now let's move on to a method that you can use to use enterprise-grade Databricks at no cost. Among the three major cloud providers, being Azure, Google Cloud, and AWS, there are often introductory trial options available to help you get started without spending any money. Microsoft Azure offers one of the most cost-friendly trials. When you create a free trial account, you get $200 worth of credit for up to 30 days. Additionally, some services remain free for 12 months. So once you get set up on a free trial, you can create a Databricks workspace, run clusters for learning and experimentation, and use free tier storage to host your data. You do need a credit card to sign up. However, once you've signed up, you can detach your credit card via the cost management and billing tool. Once your free credits have expired, you'll be prompted to create a pay-as-you-go subscription. If you don't, then you'll no longer be able to use any services or incur costs. But for those 30 days, you should be able to practice sufficiently with Databricks with the $200 credit. Similar to Azure, GCP provides $300 in free credit for new users, and this is valid for up to 90 days. So this is an even better offer. Google's longer trial period and higher credit allowance make it a great choice for those who want to explore larger scale setups or test more features. AWS is another option, but it's slightly less flexible in its free offerings. It does provide a free tier, which includes 12 months of free usage for certain services. 
but at the time of recording, it doesn't come with free credits like Azure or GCP. So leveraging these free trials is a smart way to access Databricks on enterprise grade infrastructure while keeping costs down. Whether you choose Azure, GCP or AWS, each of these options should cater for beginners looking to explore Databricks. Okay, so the cloud trials are great, but they can only be used one off. Once the trial credits or term expires, then you'll be required to pay for the services again. However, this is where you can leverage the 14 day free Databricks premium trial version when creating a new Databricks workspace on the cloud. This trial gives you access to all the enterprise grade features without any limitations. So you can experience the same platform used by companies worldwide. In order to leverage this 14 day free trial, you can head over to this link, which I'll attach with the video description. You will be required to enter your personal details, such as your name, your email, your company, your job title, and you'll also be required to choose your cloud provider. Whether it's Azure, AWS, or GCP, that's up to you. You can also leverage this 14 day free trial by accessing the cloud platform directly. And I prefer this approach because I have my own Azure cloud service already. So here's my Azure account that I've created. When I try to create a Databricks service, so if I click on Azure Databricks and create, you'll notice that on the pricing tier, I can select the free 14 day free trial. So I've already got a Databricks workspace that I've created utilizing this free trial. So let me navigate to it. So here it is. So let me launch the workspace. So this is a premium Databricks workspace that comes with all of the features, including Databricks SQL and Unity Catalog. Now, an important point is that only serverless compute is included in the free trial. The free trial does not include access to traditional Databricks clusters. Instead, it's limited to serverless compute. Serverless compute is a managed service where Databricks takes care of the infrastructure. So this serverless compute is currently not available on GCP. So with that being said, you should leverage the 14 day free trial on Azure or AWS only. Another point to note is that while Databricks free trial includes serverless compute, you may still incur some small costs for the underlying storage, but these should be really small or covered as part of the free tier usage for your cloud services. For example, I have the storage costs for the UK South region on the screen. For premium storage, the costs are about 15 pence per gigabyte per month. Okay, so now let me demonstrate how to ensure that you're using serverless compute for your notebooks. So let me go to workspace and I will just create a notebook. So you'll notice when I connect, I can either connect to general compute or SQL warehouse. You should also have the option to connect to serverless compute. The reason I don't is because I need to turn it on via the admin console. So let me access the admin console. So you need to go to settings, feature enablement, and ensure that serverless compute for workflows, notebooks, and Delta live tables is enabled. Now to be able to access this management account console, you will need elevated privileges such as global administrator. So now when I refresh this notebook, notice I can now connect to serverless compute. So it is now connected to the serverless compute, as you can see. Similarly, for Databricks SQL workflows, you can go to compute, SQL warehouses, and you can create a serverless SQL warehouse. So notice I have two serverless SQL warehouses already created. So when you create an SQL warehouse, just ensure the type is serverless. Similarly, for SQL workflows, when you create your job, you can also use the serverless compute for your jobs. So just to reiterate, the free trial only applies to serverless compute. If you create a general purpose cluster, for example, then you'll incur costs. So that's something to be mindful of. And regardless of how careful you're being, I would still highly recommend that you check the cost and billing regularly via your cloud provider to ensure that you're not incurring any unwanted costs. Once your 14 day free trial expires, you can delete the Databricks workspace and create a new one to start another free trial. Now this approach isn't suitable for production workflows, 
but for students or learners, it's a great way to access Databricks for free. Recreating a new workspace every 14 days is a minor inconvenience compared to the opportunity to learn with free access to the platform. With these tips, you now have several ways to use Databricks without incurring costs while learning and exploring the platform. The Databricks Community Edition, although limited in its features, is an excellent starting point to grasp the basics of Spark and Databricks. As you progress and require access to more advanced capabilities, you can transition to the Enterprise Edition of Databricks by utilizing free cloud credits from providers like Azure, GCP, and AWS. Keep in mind that at the time of recording, only Azure and AWS support serverless compute for the trial, while GCP is yet to offer this feature. By following these approaches, you can focus on learning and building your skills in Databricks without worrying about costs. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content on data engineering and cloud technologies. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.